recording. I'm recording. Good. If you, oh, so I'm not. If you want to record, Hi. you're welcome. No. Hi, all right. No, I've got too many videos lately. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, no, thank you. Yeah. So how's your, how are your courses going, Nellie? Amazing. Oh, I had an amazing um, video from um, Natasha, mm. our Natasha. And um, it was a collaborative meeting that they had in their teams. Remember, I work on t with teams. And uh, it was amazing how these guys are working together, complete strangers, teachers mm -hmm. from around the world, on oh. developing and learning. So it's, mm -hmm. it's really, um, I love it. That's, that's what I like. Back up and people. tell us a little bit about your course. Oh, there's nothing special. I mean, it's just um, it's a always course. Special, Nelly. <laughs> no, I mean, what's special, for me, what's special is uh, the participants collaborating and working together. That's, mm -hmm. doesn't matter what the course content is, the fact that they're working together is just, mm -hmm. uh, it's just Learning amazing. together, whatever. Learn, exactly, <laughs> learning together. That's, That's exactly what it is. Yeah. So thank you, Vance, for, for doing it. <laughs> There's Daph down there. Last time I saw Daph, it was in Dania. Oh, is she here? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm here. Where are you? Here. Where are you now? Oh, now I see you. Wow. Uh, I'm, I'm in, hello. You're in hello. <laughs> nice. Hello. Nice to, oh. nice to see you all. <laughs> nice to see you, Daphne. Virtual I'm in, hugs. Uh, I'm in Dania, Spain. Uh -huh. Dania, huh? Yeah, you know that I believe in here. Lovely little same, town. Pla same place that you visited, fans. Yeah. So nice to go out there and walking late at night and eating in restaurants. Is that still going on in Dania? Well, not uh, since a month ago. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been uh, confined. Mm -hmm. and uh, But well, Dania is still Dania. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm taking it uh, patiently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to. Being home, doing the things that I never have the time to do. Uh -huh. Ah, wonderful. Reading, wonderful. cooking, mm -hmm. doing ahead. crafts, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, doing power walk. <laughs> power walk? Yes. In the house? Yes. In the house, yes. In the house, you walk on <laughs> coals in the house. The virtual or how? Is can you can you see this here? Uh, walk on really. the town. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. okay. Yes. Okay. So it's uh, like four miles in forty-five minutes. Yeah, and use that in your house. Yeah. Yes. So your oh. house must be really big. No, 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 it's, it's, it's a power walk is walking in place. Oh, you know, oh, and, oh, and, and you walk in place and you do other kind of uh, exercises, uh, low impact exercises, you know, like uh, walking, but stretching your arms, your uh, legs, and uh, uh, in the same place, you know, just like uh, two steps oh, back forward to the side. And it's, it's nice with nice music. So it's a, it's a relaxing 45 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can do that online with us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. I would join you because yeah. I can't see myself doing it alone. I was but wondering what you do for the other 23 hours and 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, cooking, I do a lot of cooking. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, because I love cooking and I love eating. That's part oh, of the culture. That's, that's part of I the culture in Spain. Sure. Daphne, Go ahead. <laughs> are you the Daphne, Daphne Gonzalez who was on Education for many years? Yes. Daphne Smirnov. We've never seen each other in real. <laughs> I've always seen an avatar. There you are. <laughs> wow, that is amazing. Yeah, that's me. I'm I'm not I'm not uh, I don't have uh, red hair. I'm not a red hair, I'm not as tall as my avatar, and I'm not as skinny as my avatar either. You don't fly. <laughs> uh, Daphne used to be, uh, for many years, she's been very advanced in teaching uh, Spanish in, in world. Mm -hmm. She's done an amazing job. She's, she was the first one to actually embrace that. 
but then she disappeared a couple of years ago and never know what happened to you. <laughs> well, I've, I've been really, uh, you know, doing other things face to face, uh, trying to, to do things to, uh, well, to go ahead in life. And, uh, but now I, I'm, you know, this, uh, in this uh, month that I've been uh, in prison, <laughs> in prison? I, yeah, because it's we cannot go out. In prison, I guess, but. <laughs> yes, well, we're all in prison. <laughs> yeah, and, and here in Spain, we cannot go out uh, only, to, ah. you can only go to the supermarket or ah. to the drugstore. Hmm. Uh, yeah, the same thing here yeah. in Morocco. Yeah, so it's, uh, and I us what I usually do is that I uh, ask for uh, uh, home delivery for food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just go down to take the trash and, uh, you know, I take the car and, and go around the, the block, trying not to have the, the police uh, follow me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, and at my age, I'm not sure if I go into a hospital if they will give me a respirator if I need it, if there is a 40 year old there. That's, 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 the, that's, the, that's the reality here. Mm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's so terrible. I better keep safe and sane and yeah. healthy. Yeah. Well, listen, I want to add, I, my co-host is here, Michael. Michael! Hey, Michael, who are we? Isn't it late at here? night? You, it must be late. You have these things. Hello! Sorry, man. Hello, everybody. Hello. I, catch that. I kind of got interrupted by several other voices, but that sounds like a lovely sound coming in from somewhere in the Middle East, perhaps. What did you ask me, Vance? Uh, can you tell us who we are and what we're doing here? <laughs> um, well, I think that the email you sent out earlier explains it very well. We're just um, people who are living in the time of COVID-19 and all of us in one way or another are confined to our homes and we're all finding ways of eking out the 24 hours that we have to endure before we get to another day and do exactly the same thing. <laughs> and I just thought this was a really good idea to to strike up these regular sessions. Oh, look who's here. Oh my gosh. And kind of Paula, look who came. Hello. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in how many years? At least seven, oh, eight. Hello. Oh, hello. Oh my gosh. Hello. Oh, it's Hi. so good to see you. How are you? Wow. I'm sorry, I wow. think I left my mic unmuted. I really miss you all. Hi, Michael. Nelly. Yes. Daphne. Oh, my God. <laughs> Daphne disappeared exactly like how I did. Mubarak, <laughs> how are you? Yeah, bye. Hello, Elizabeth, hello. how are you? Susanna. And Elizabeth. Elizabeth Ann is here. Wow. Hello, Hi, Ki. How are you all? Nice. Well, this is a mm. great meeting, Vance. Thanks. And Mike. Yeah, Holla is in Bahrain now. Share their stories about what they're doing when Daphne's just told her what told us what she's doing. She's keeping fit and losing weight and running around her house and staying <laughs> sane. <laughs> what are others doing during the day? You can talk about professional practice if you want, or just really how are you getting through the days? What's it like for you? Anyone want to talk about it? Just go for it. We have a newcomer here, Sandeep. Sandeep, you've, who are you? You've joined us. Tell us about yourself. Hi, everybody. Hi. Yeah, this is Sandeep from India. Actually, it is uh, very interesting to tell you my, uh, just, uh, my day is just, uh, I'm spending in the house only. I'm confined in the house. I can't go outside. But I'm just in uh, using that time for the things which I had forgotten to do. Uh, in the uh, past, I wanted to just go through a few of the books like, you know, spirituality and all that. So, the came and I started really reading that book. So, and uh, I have an uh, angel, actually, I have a daughter. So, I am spending most of my time playing with her. So, somewhere, you know, the things uh, uh, which I have 
very uh, unprecedented year that are happening with us and we need to just think about the uh, novel things in which we can utilize our time and i'm trying to search new new things for that thank you yeah and and susanna had a really successful uh, uh session a couple of days ago do you know who was there that we haven't seen for a long time who's that who guess guess christina costa no uh -huh. no uh, christina um, costa really nice. yeah um there's a b guess a b. guess mm -hmm. ah b b b b uh, was there yeah. b no b, no not b b is coming next week uh, not b oh, okay um doris no we we see no. doris all the time no. a b u starts with a b u okay she's a uh, Evelyn. 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 Yeah. Uh, Eve i see evelyn <laughs> evelyn and i are in touch all the time so. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay no yeah. buthena was there so oh she was there too i haven't seen her for a while yeah. Well, face to face since 2011, I think. Mm, yeah, so it was really nice. Uh, nice. She, actually, if you read the learningtogether.net event, uh, you can read all about that. But it came from uh, another meeting that Susanna held with uh, uh, Rostamov. What was it? Was Ibrahim Rostamov? Yeah, in uh, Tajikistan. Oh, no and uh some other people i didn't know but anyway i don't know do you want to tell us more about that susanna how that came off you're going to tell that story last uh, week. ramona ramona dietrich uh -huh. and ramona from portugal ramona okay. dietrich mm -hmm. yes and you had some students with you or no it's just the, the... yes uh -huh. okay yes the the idea was an interview mm -hmm. from my students to a webhead mm -hmm. each time to show how we are uh, living this uh, quarantine. Uh, and my students were really amazed. They say, wow, teacher, we are opening the class to the world. Well, it was a fantastic experience. Um, um, we we are from a boarding school in the middle of the country. Uh, my students learn to how breed animals like cows and pigs, that sort of things. And uh, they don't have a good internet connection at the school. So it was a possibility because they were at home and we had classes through this fantastic <laughs> tool, through Zoom, and I invited uh, teachers to my class to have uh, an interview, a very, very simple interview. Uh, what are you missing? What are your plans for the, the next future? And uh, it was amazing, amazing, absolutely. So, Thank you for the possibility to tell you. Hi, Sus. Hi. Wow, everybody's here. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, waiting for, for more experiences from you uh, because you are the great webhead people here. All of you. All of us. You have to say all of all us. Of us. Say that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Vance. <laughs> yeah. Well. So, Elizabeth, you didn't get to say much last time. How, how are you doing in Grenoble? Unmute. Don't forget to unmute. Oh. Okay. Yes, I'm okay. going. It's good netiquette to mute yourself when you're not talking. And when you are talking, you have to unmute. She'll work it out. Yes. There you are. Good point. Um, <laughs> yes, I said I was just trying to sort out my background because it went. It was very good on the phone, and uh, it's jumping all over the place here. Um, so sorry for the disturbance. Uh, yeah, no, I've, I've got um, I, I've got a thing going with my grandchildren. So my two French grandchildren, with whom I've never spoken English. There was a very active demand for English lessons, please. And uh, first one, which 
was worked so well for a week, his little brother asked to join. Now, a little brother who is nine years old and has never spoken English, I must admit, I'm finding it quite difficult <laughs> because uh, I've never taught children. Everyone I taught had 11 years English behind them. <laughs> so it's quite an experience. Um, so that that makes a regular appointment twice a day, once for one and once for the other one. I'm sorry about that, I can't hear you anymore. I can hear ah, nothing, I don't know. I can, I hear you. can you hear me? I'm hearing you fine. Okay. Yeah, ah. very clear. Chris so, is oh yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, apart from my grandchildren and then, of course, buying a mountain of chocolate because it was Easter. <laughs> and we always celebrate Easter. <laughs> And I'm not quite sure what to do with that now. <laughs> yeah, I had Zoom videos with my grandchildren on Easter, so birthdays and things like that. Uh, Chris has put something in the text chat. Let's see, it looks like I'll just paste the. I, I just now opened the text chat. I see, I don't, the last thing I saw was Chris was there. Chris, you wanted to tell us about this link, Oxford Dreamers yeah. Bookshelf. I, I, I think it's a, a very generous offer from Oxford University Press to parents, um, students, teachers. If you use uh, Oxford Learners Bookshelf, you can just download 148 readers that you can use any time in the next three months. I think the offer expires at the end of June. Um, really a fantastic offer. You can listen to the readers as well as um, as reading them. I've had a few problems downloading so many readers on my little Android tablet. It hasn't succeeded in downloading them, but on my iPad it has, and um, on on the web um, it works perfectly. So I now got you know a huge number of readers. That many of which I've read already. Um, <clears throat> I think Thomas Robb would be uh, interested in this as well. Pity he's not here. Ah, uh, yeah. So these are readers for uh, English as e uh, EFL students, that kind of reader, yeah. rated readers. Rated readers from uh -huh. um, Oxford. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, lots of uh, booksellers are making offers like this. Um, Maybe I can find the, uh, putting them in, uh, if you have things like this to share, I'll give you a link uh, where you can put, uh, you can paste things into that. It's, a, it's a, a Google Doc that anybody can write on. I'll find its link and I'll paste it there and you can, you can write on it if you like. I don't know if anybody's seen what I did with Talon. Did anybody look at any of the Talon sites lately? Did you notice any change? The, the Facebook group or the it's uh, tinyurl.com slash talent 2020. I made an interesting change, but I'm not going to tell you about it. You'll have to find it yourself. Um, can I just ask I'm not sure if you hear me. I don't hear you anymore. Oh, I hear I two people. Hear I hear two so, people. I'm sorry. I have to leave and try to fix my problem with the audio. Oh, well, you're you, we hear you Thank fine, you. Mubarak. We hear you fine. Can I interrupt here, please? I but just he didn't hear us. Yes. Who's that? I'm asking to uh, can, uh, uh, OUP, uh, the uh, uh, Oxford University Press, because I've attended a webinar uh, two days ago, and it was really beneficial. I added the link to the chat area. They do have, interestingly, they do have synchronous teaching which is coming tomorrow, a webinar, but it's live teaching. They also have webinars, um, you know, about engaging uh, students in reading and very, very official, uh, sorry, very um, uh, beneficial uh, webinars. So if you'd like just to, to put it on your calendar. Right. The link if, is if you want to put links in the text chat, we will, they'll I be did. put into, yeah, they'll be put into the, uh, the uh, archive of this. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I did. 
ELT. Mm -hmm. could, I, could I just ask you again about this Oxford Learners Bookshelf? Because there's many sort of links on that website. Do we, do we sign up? Do we download the app? Do we sign up with a code? Or how do we get to these 148 readers? Chris, if um, you could explain, that would be great. I, I've, I've got different apps on different um, devices, but you can do it simply on a, a web browser. Is all you have to do is to sign up. It's completely free. You get a few free samples for you to look at anyway. And then normally you would be buying books and you get access codes to buy those books. But with this special offer, it will automatically download the 148 readers. Obviously, it doesn't download the content, it downloads the pictures of the readers and then you download the ones you want to listen to. Um, but it's all completely free, um, pure altruism, I think. M maybe it'll help people find out about Oxford Learner's Bookshelf. And, and the readers, the readers means that they come in Kindle format or do they come in PDF or how do they come? Do they come into an app? What does no, that mean, readers? Read an app. You can do it with your web browser. And in fact, on a computer, that works extremely well. Um, when you download the books, it keeps track of where you are in the book. Um, you can make notes, audio notes or text notes. And you can get it to read aloud. So, I mean, for any learner of English, it goes from A1 to B2. Sadly, there are no readers for the higher levels. Um, but still, for a lot of people, that could be a very useful, useful tool. Is it for young learners, Chris, or for adult learners? Um, I think there are some for, for young learners, but as I've never taught young learners, I didn't look into it. I think the right, I'm interested. I would be interested in, yeah, I would be interested in young learners if anybody knows of any such programs for kids. Oh, I mean, you've nothing to lose. Is all you're doing is signing up, giving your email address, establishing a password, and you can access it. Um, all completely free. What, what I found uh, very useful for the 14 year old is the videos on the British Council site, videos for kids. They have a series of two minute videos and then they give you the text. And uh, there's some excellent ones, Florence Nightingale, Newton, things like this that um, you know, did actually work very well. And well, the only two I've done so far. But I, it was the advantage I found was it was two minutes. The other sites I tried are always six minutes long, and that was just too too long. Okay, be sure and share the links if you have them handy. Uh, I would like to to tell you that I've managed to uh, create a, uh, an account, and I'm there uh, for the for the one who asked about their young learners. I'm just reviewing Alibaba now. And I think it's really worth it, really worth it, even for your grandchildren a little bit, because uh, what I can see now, it's, uh, there is a recording here, it's, there is an audio, sorry, and they can even uh, adjust it, the slow and normal and fast. Um, they can repeat the sentences. I think it's amazing. Thank you very much, Chris. This would be very helpful for mm -hmm. my my, my daughter and my students who are teaching um, at primary level. Thank you. Yeah, it's, I've sent it to my uh, grand, well, my, my daughter for her, for her daughter, because I think it's really useful for kids. Can I, can I share my screen? Because I just managed to get access to this 148 books. <laughs> and I think it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, go for it. <clears throat> so I just signed up here, and um, this was this was the bookshelf before. And then 
came a prompt, 148 books for free. And this is what I got just here at the bottom here, all of those. Alibaba, 40 Thieves, Last Chance, The Cat, Hercules, then Oxford Readers A1, A2. My goodness, this is amazing. <laughs> William Thank Kate. You. That's exactly what I need. Thanks. Look at that. This is incredible. It says expires 30th of June. And uh, Gandhi, Hound of Baskervilles, and these are the 140. Wow, 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 wow. This is amazing. Yeah, it is. Thank you, Chris. Um, but I hope they extend it because I think that in many schools in North America, especially, uh, they're not thinking of going back to school until September. So June or July is not enough. You would need it to the end of August, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Real. Maybe they'll reconsider. Speaking. Yeah. You're in that well, that's, yeah, that's the plan. I don't know what it's like in Europe. Any, any um, thoughts or, I don't know, have you heard anything about Europe when they're planning to go back to school? Well, we had, a, we had the Minister of Education denying terribly strongly that it wouldn't be September, but that September was still on the table. <laughs> so I think it's, uh, I think it's going to be September too. The, the I think that's, was that yeah, go ahead. The, the problem was that in Germany where they have managed it so well, I saw that when they tested the population of a hard hit region, only 10% of the people were, um, had the antibodies. So you know, it was such a, uh, uh, an effective shutdown that not enough people had had, a, had had a minor version of the thing. I'm not quite sure where we go from here. I don't know because they're saying now that uh, it's coming back. There's um, a recurrence. So I don't know. Well, 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 I've, I've just read today a report uh, that is to be published, you know, uh, 39 pages of a, a, a group of 26 experts in the field from economy to science, uh, uh, psychology and whatever. It's called Lupoldina report and they're going to uh, issue some recommendations on how to go back and they're saying that uh, they would recommend that schools that the uh, secondary schools go back after Easter. Um, they should go in smaller groups, like uh, up to 15 students, and then they uh, all should sit uh, two meters apart and make, but make sure that just that group sort of stays together and then they, that they all should uh, wear a mouth mask when they go to school. They don't recommend kindergartens to go back to school because they say, kindergartens are less likely to be very firm with their mouth masks. So uh, it should really be those who are secondary, like who go back to college, also soon doing the exams for college and everything. Yeah, that's, yeah. Sue, Sue what did you want to say? Uh, yes, um, in Denmark, they are sending back uh, to normal, um, even preschoolers, even the little ones, uh, age zero. And, um, and un until um, grade five, that is, uh, what age are they, 11 or 12, um, the parents are very um, confused about uh, directions, are very unclear. Uh, to begin with, they, they said, uh, our prime minister said, they would, uh, they would want all children to go back, uh, no matter if there was any uh, uh, contaminated people in the, in the household, uh, or, or if, if there were uh, people with, uh, with other uh, conditions being, being at risk. And now they have made it a little more selective that parents could decide they would not send their children to school because it is, it's going to be a mess. It's really going to be a mess. They are, um, they are not opening up everything else. That means the children are going to be in front of, uh, of uh, taking in the, the contamination uh, risk. They, we are told that children may not be very 
spill and they may not very easily be, be, be contaminated, but uh, who really knows uh, what is the truth? Uh, we, we don't have evidence. We don't, we don't really, really know what to think. And for the time being, they're very, very busy preparing schools as uh, they're going to be in smaller groups and uh, having more space and there, there, there must be more uh, cleaning happening all, all day long. And uh, they are busy buying, um, they are renting pavilions with, uh, with toilet facilities so that uh, you can actually ask children to go and wash their hands. Um, I, have, I have an interesting historical uh, view on this. In 1928, there was built a new school, um, a very big school in, in the outskirts of Copenhagen for 1,500 children. And there was a department for, for children who were at risk, uh, at a health risk. Uh, they were going to put 144 children in this uh, um, they call it the outdoor school because they were going to be a lot of the time outdoor. But they were having 144 children and they were installing 144 uh, hand washing uh, devices. So the meaning was all the children can wash their hands at the same time. Today they may be sharing, I don't know how, how, how few hand washes there are, but, but uh, it is really, really shocking. Which means that the, the hygienic standard today is very low. All those things that we learned uh, years ago to, to, to take in have been uh, neglected or forgotten or um, slowed down because of the economy. And I think that's very thought provoking. We'll have to to um, reinvent the public um, education of the hygienic standards. I think you're right. Another thing I think is that the classes are too big. Yes. We're talking about um, younger children, especially with uh, 40 kids in one class and many, and even more in other parts of the world. So you're right. Uh, for going to change our way of living. I'm not just talking about the corona. We'll find a, um, a solution to that. There'll be something else in the future. I'm sure it's not going to be the last uh, so-called episode. So we should have smaller classes, um, you know, pay teachers more, um, and, and deal with things today, you know, instead of waiting for an out, another outbreak. Why, you know, why wait around when we can start planning now for the future? Well, uh, Vance has been asking uh, what people have been up to these days. Um, I, I, last week I couldn't join because I, I helped 190 lecturers of a university to cope with 55 Zoom rooms um, to all teach online. And there was a couple of things interesting I found that they uh, at the moment are trying to cope with. Uh, a lot of them, honestly, they don't have a, a a content management system or a learning management system in place. So if they can cope with Zoom is one thing, but then they try and establish some online space to collaborate in. They're asking the students to sign up on Teams, on OneNote, on Google Drive, on G Suite, on Miro, on Mural, and you name it, the whole lot. <laughs> So that was that was kind of interesting to find out what they're trying to do. Really great lecturers indeed, but um, you know it's a chaos. <laughs> Anybody else has interesting experiences in this online period? <laughs> I sh I share with you that it's chaos um, with teachers, my fellow teachers who've never used technology. Most of them have never used technology. And uh, many of them are against it. They were against it. And now they don't know what to say, like as if, you know, uh, they're trying to find out who they really are <laughs> in, this, in this age. So yeah, chaos. I would say chaos. And I would agree with Sue that governments also don't know what they're saying. They're saying one thing and then another, and nobody's seeing. So I think we're all in the same boat. 
we're, no matter where we live, we're all facing, I mean, us as educators, we've been using technology for years, um, you know, for over 20, 30 years. Um, we're, we're seeing the same thing wherever we are. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, whatever you say, I'll say, right, same thing in my territory, same story. So um, I, I have no idea, you know, why everybody's fussing about being home because, you know, those of us that sit in front of the computer for hours giving online uh, conferences <laughs> and so on, you know, this is like, okay, so what's new or, you know, okay, I'm not able to walk, you know, or, and run five kilometers. I can only go, say, 100 meters and I have to um, stay away from anyone which is horrible. But other than that, you know, um, we're going to continue with this for another maybe three months. So I don't know how you feel about it, but it is kind of scary when you think that you're not allowed to go out, you're imprisoned, and you'll get a fine, like in Spain and Italy and in other parts of the world, you get fined for going out. So uh, you can sneak out but they're planning to find ways uh, to, to catch you, you know, and not by car from the air. So, um, and, and personally, I thought uh, we are lucky. We're lucky to, to be in online or have been online for a while because if, if I didn't have this job <laughs> that keeps me really busy, it would, I would go crazy. I would go crazy about the news. I would go crazy about this confinement. Um, and uh, I'm, uh, to be honest, I'm experiencing a lot of really, really great things at the moment online, such as this meeting. I mean, people I've not even <laughs> met. And uh, so thank you, Vance, for organizing this just right in time. <laughs> yeah, really wonderful. Me and, me and Michael. And ah, wonderful, you both. I, I want to be sure and hear from everybody. And Lane has joined us. Lorena has also asked to speak. So, uh, but I'd like to make sure we get Lane because she's talking tomorrow. And if you're coming tomorrow, I'd like she needs to tell you what you need to do. So let's let's hear from Lane. Hi, Lane. Hi. Hi. Um. I don't know. I just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> I woke okay. up and I What's said, oh my God, I have to get there quick because I'm presenting tomorrow and I should. Oh so yeah. Nice. So I'm, I'm not going to be worth much, but I do have a couple of things quick to say. Um, first of all, hi, Daph. How are you? I haven't seen you in a hundred years. <laughs> One of my mentors. It's great to see you. I learned so much from you back in the day. Come on. We've learned from each other. But what I wanted to say is um, there is some pre-work. You all know what pre-work is from Flip Learning? So um, I don't do webinars anymore unless um, there's a pre-work aspect to it because I think people get a lot more out of a webinar if they've had a preview and I have a preview of what, who they are and what they think. And so um, I put those links in the PB Works page. I added them. I just, I just put I'm the put yeah. I just put the link to that in the in the tech chat. So because last time someone taught me that. Oh no! Wait a minute. Did I put an S there? Uh, I get I get so mixed up whether there's an S or not after the HTTP because they didn't turn into links. Um, the, um, I put a bit.ly and a not bit.ly because somebody said in certain countries a bit.ly doesn't work right or something. But the pre-work is uh, very short. It's not long. It consists of some questions. Well, first there's me saying hello. It's who you're, here I am. You already know me, but some people don't. So I do that. And then I have questions, just a very few, just to get some things going. And then there's a, a, a little video. Um, uh, oh no, that's the other webinar. I'm sorry, I'm mixing up my two webinars. Because I do have another one where there's 10 tips in 10 minutes, how to be a good, 
how to be a successful online learner. 10 tips in 10 minutes <laughs> that I did for my students. But that won't, that's not tomorrow. But I can get you that anyway. I can give you that. But um, <clears throat> anyway, there's a, it's just a short pre-work. And then the last piece of the pre-work for tomorrow is a, it's a choice of two articles. Very short. They're like blogs. So two short articles and you get to pick whichever one you want to read and then you give me a takeaway from the article. Because I always think it's important to give people choices and not just tell them one thing to do. So pick whichever article you want and give a takeaway. That's the pre-work. So uh, I may have messed up the links. I'm not, I'm not a good like every little detail type of person. So but I think that's the link. You have to be that kind of person, right? <laughs> when you give a link. Anyway, it's about, it's about my synchronous on, I'll stop in a second. It's about my synchronous online flipped learning approach. It's, I call it SOFLA. So it has an acronym. Some of you have already heard this before because I mentioned it last Monday. Um, but I'm a real believer in synchronous, largely because of Vance, because I learned from him the value of webcam and audio and being a real person online. So I give a big, big pitch for synchronous because most people drag their feet and say it's just not worth it. Um, so I do that. Um, and I hope you join, but if you don't, just watch the recording. <laughs> you don't have to watch it. But yeah. I made it at 10 in the morning for you guys because I prefer late in the day because I teach at night all the time, so my, my schedule's very late. I, I, I teach tonight at five o'clock, my time. Mm. What is it now? It, it, it's uh, not even nine o'clock. I teach in eight hours, is that mm. right? Or whatever, so many hours. And um, so my whole life is late. <laughs> mm. yeah. But I made this webinar because it's for you all over the world, I made it at 10 in the morning, which is about as early as I can actually be a teacher. We okay. really appreciate it. Um, I add to the market, to marketing your session. I've been uh, to the session last week and it was amazing. Thank you very much. I've learned a lot. I really like how you, uh, is, is my voice clear? Yes, it is, Hala. Yeah, I'm trying to put some uh, uh, light on my face but because mm. I'm at the balcony now we had rain mm. and usually we don't have rain you know pans so mm. when it rains we just uh, run and dance mm. under the rain so uh, your session was very helpful uh, I, and the, the title is very catchy so I think this is what uh, triggered my just I have to be there yeah. I like Thank the steps you. and I like the interactivity uh, the poll, you put the poll and you, you and the, um, the suggestion. Oh, I need to ask you that, Vance. If I have polls, I have four polls. Who puts polls in in your, in your room? Because it's your room. I think you can do it. But if you want to arrange them for me in advance, I can try so to do that. I can do it, but I have to do it. I can't go in now and do it, right? I mean, I have I to know. do it Check. right before I present, right? Um, I'm not sure to tell you frankly. I share the link and then uh, the the but you share the link. The participant uh, has have to click on the link. They go to the other uh, platform if it is Quizlice or uh, Google Form, and then uh, you, they come back. But as uh, during their taking the poll, you could see that how many participants are doing that. So you can even uh, tell them, I have seen, I, I can see only two or three, come on guys, go and take the poll. And it should be very um, uh, short, of course, one or two or three questions. That's, that's just uh, my two cents. Do you, have, do you have polls in your setup, in your options? Me? Yeah, do you see them at the bottom yeah. of your screen? Uh, you, should, you, I don't, you mean you want to add them now to the room? Is that what you want to do, Lane? No, I think before tomorrow, right? Well, not now, but I mean when I come in the room, the last time I was in someone else's oh, room, yes, I, I had do. a problem because I couldn't run my polls. Uh, I do, underneath uh, and under more. Do you not have polls yourself? Can you find po under more for the I chat? have them in my room, but we're using your room. So. Yeah, I know. But you need what, to what make you us. Think? You need. You need you to think? make us mod. A host like a mod, you need to make us uh, co host. We, you, we oh, don't to see, make, yeah, we can do that. Otherwise we don't see it. only the host sees with the co host. 
Yeah. Okay, we'll I can make you a co-host for your meeting tomorrow. That would be great. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we'll get together on that. And then you can get it in advance. You can go, I think she can go in in advance uh, to go into the room if she's a co-host. Uh -huh. You can make her a co-host in advance. She can okay. go in, set up the polls, and then you can, you, you can be there beforehand. He doesn't have to allow you to come in okay. like he does with us in the waiting room while yeah. we wait. And wait, and wait, and wait. <laughs> I'm sorry about And then that. think, is he going to let us in or not? Is he going to let us in? Maybe he won't. I got that uh, technique from WizIQ. WizIQ could never get in until, you know, even if you're presenting. But anyway, I'm just oh, kidding about that. that. <laughs> I'm just teasing. The reason for that is so that if there is any disruption, we can move people to the, uh, to the w waiting room. But there hasn't been any, so anyway. I, I just started using that to see what would happen. So anyway, I want to hear for L Lorena. She's the only person whose voice we haven't heard tonight. I want to make sure and get her on the recording. She wants to talk about what's new in schools, where she is. So maybe Lorena, you can, hi, how are you? Everyone, nice mm -hmm. to see you again with this week. I mm -hmm. was watching the recording from last week and I was just amazed how much I missed out. Uh, from, uh, you know, because uh, it was the first time I joined you all. So I, I missed so much information. So listening to the, the recording is really, really amazing. It was really helpful. Now, uh, I'm based in the UK. Um, I'm based in London. And this, this week is very tough here. I'm a bit, you know, <laughs> not as Sadly, as last week, we are in, the, in a time of reflection, rethinking, and I just, uh, there are very um, um, alarming uh, numbers of young people calling the NSPCC for help, mental health, uh, children that have never experienced before any, any issues, um, teenagers, um, as I think learning at the moment should be really about caring and, and I really emphasize this. You know, many, many people are thinking about the curriculum, not missing out, but actually people are losing their loved ones here, their grandparents. So are we just going to resume the school and carry on like nothing has happened? So I think that's so important to just listen, rethink. And I don't believe uh, schools can resume as nothing has happened. We need to rethink. We need to rethink about the environment. How good we have clean air. I mean, people were dying before the lockdown because the poor air in London, the schools were closing, so they were not able to play in the playground in central London because of the air. So we had to widen the, you know, we had to rethink and we cannot go back to normal. Then the, the very interesting thing in the schools at the moment, the schools are running for the minimum, you know, the people that are really risking their lives and going to work at the moment. And these are becoming small paradises. They're oases for these children. Why? Because they're small and they're caring spaces. So why schools are not able to run like this? And that's my question here. You know, do you think schools will resume them back to normal or there should be a rethink? Um, And I just want to pass on. Hello? Yeah, that's a huge problem. I, I share the caring part with you, um, and which is why I keep Zoom for all my young learners. I teach in a junior high, ages 12 to uh, 14. And they, they need you know, Zoom just to, just to talk to each other, to fool around. I let them fool around. They show me their rooms. They show each other. They start fooling around and they need this. They need, they need to be kids. And right now, they're, not only are we not listening to them and they're not being heard because they're at home, um, they're, also, they're not playing. They're not being kids. They're, they're, you know, they're not fooling around. They're just uh, very, very passive. So these rooms are really important for teachers to open up to their, I think every teacher should open up to their classes, but teachers are not, because I think a lot of teachers, at least the teachers that I know in my school, are in shock. And they're not opening up Zoom classes, even though the ministry has allowed them to open them up, uh, because they're, 
I don't know, either they're afraid or they've just frozen up. They're not, they don't know how to, how to handle or how to manage uh, themselves in an online environment such as Zoom. So I think that we do require training. And I think that um, if um, Lane is doing that and others are doing that, uh, that's what we need to do. We need to help. And I think that we're all in a position here. We're all experienced um, with online learning to help teachers around the world. I don't know, to organize something. I think maybe Vince and Mike have ideas how to reach these teachers that seem to be, you know, frozen. They don't know what to do with their learners. And I'm specifically thinking of young learners because they're the ones that we need to look after right now in the education system um, because they're our future. So even if you're not used to teaching young learners, I think it would help teachers if we could reach them and help them. Daphne, you've had a lot of experience. So people like you, you know, all over the world to find out how we can reach these teachers so they can help uh, the youngsters that need help right now. If I That's, can add something yeah. back to that, if I can add something, I've been in touch with a, a wonderful man, Ian Cunningham. He's Dr. Ian Cunningham, and he founded the Self-Managed Learning College in Brighton. Now, they closed the building, but the college is working as normal, and, and, and the, the students are reporting that they're experiencing, experiencing even a better experience than before. So this college has managed to switch effectively, and they do, uh, they do, I mean, they, they, the, 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 the young people self-manage the learning. And, and this is something that is switched online and is working beautifully. I was, I was in Melian, I was because he's really helped the, the you know, lots of, lots of, my goodness, he's, uh, Ian Cunningham has saved lives in this country. Um, so, and, and he's been for 20 years, this college has been open in Brighton. I will, I will write it down in the chat. And this for me is model, you know, that's the model. And I think it's the future. And it will take a while because uh, these young people are doing wonderfully well. And I really, they're saying, some of them are saying, actually, I do prefer this way of learning. I've never experienced it before. Um, because I don't really enjoy being next to other students sometimes, and it's my space, and I could communicate so well. So they are benefiting, and they're w really well. I mean, they are between nine and se 16, 17 years old, and they're really happy. So for me, this is a model. This is, this is someone that can provide quite a lot of good information. He, this is a new paradigm in education he's been bringing for 20 years. Now in the UK, it takes a long time the change in education. It's very, it's facing very kind of Victorian way of, uh, that's my perception as an educator. Um, so I think this, this person could provide quite a lot of wisdom on that at this time, that is quite desperate times for young people, to be honest. Uh, with young learners, I think uh, we, we should really listen to home educators because uh, also the people over the world have been home educating for a long time and it's, it's wonderful. In, you know, that's the ideal time to experience, to read about this and to try at home. Um, I think for a six year old, that's going to be more meaningful than uh, logging in at nine o'clock with, with a teacher and a school, unless they like it and they enjoy that. That's fine, but to be compulsory, I think it's a bit unfair. But um, yes, that's so. I write on the on the chat this information if it's helpful to anyone. Okay, well, we're coming to the top of the hour. I don't know how important that is, but um, uh, is there any anybody any, any final remarks or? Uh, where to go from here? Oh, I might tell you, I got an email from Nick Peachy. I would asked him uh, if he wanted to do something uh, for us, and he gave me a set of, looks like about uh, half a dozen webinars. One of them is on preparing students to succeed online, uh, developing your teaching online, creativity in online learning, how to deliver a webinar. The one that uh, exploiting video tasks, things like that. But the one that caught me, preparing your students to succeed online, because I think in a way that's 
uh, what I'm catching from other people um, is that there, like you said, there's chaos, and um, uh, that's that's what's really caught a lot of professors or teachers off guard. I think is just the you know they have to train students, uh, which is not really what that's not their subject, and. Uh, I, there's maybe should be something uh, somebody responsible at educational institutions for making sure the students meet certain standards for entering classrooms online but that's not being done yet but um, I don't know if there are any thoughts on that is that a good thing that Nick should talk about if I we get him to come online everything is good Vance but what I what I would like is to get the teachers to come online See, uh, most of these um, online venues and uh, I guess days, whatever you want to call them, meetings, um, are with people who are already online. You don't get many newcomers to come, um, unfortunately. Um, how, how do we get them? How do we get the uh, frightened teachers, <laughs> the ones that are stuck in their homes and don't know what to do? Uh, how do we get them to come online? That's that's, that's my uh, that's, the question. that's what I've been asking myself. I, I think what you have to do is get the early adopter at each program or each school, and let them bring let them herd their own cats. So, you know, we can't. They don't know us, so we can't reach them. But if we can reach one person out in each program or district, maybe that person can gather their people and keep, you know, make it like a wave or a turnkey. Well, I must confess, I'm a failure at that. I've been trying for about over 20 years to do that. <laughs> and I have not been able to. So, um, yeah, it is, uh, it is failure on my part. We have a Facebook group in Tallinn, and people are joining every day, probably five or six people a day, maybe three maybe to be honest but anyway but every day we're, you know every time I look at it there's there are more people who want to join I think there are 24 people in the group now and uh, I asked you if there, you noticed anything different about the sites anybody noticed anything yet I'm not going to tell <laughs> anyhow there's the anybody can go to tinyurl.com slash talent 2020 and just add, you have to ask to uh, edit but that's granted to anybody who asks and uh, you can then go and, um, uh, you know, anybody can come and talk. And we really love to hear from teachers. So if you can encourage them to come on, um, that's available for them. That's what it's for. That's what actually what I'm kind of devoting my month to is, you know, hearing from people. And uh, it's not just uh, Michael and I are going to be online with B next Sunday at uh, uh, this time. And um, we, we used to do webheads on Sunday. That's kind of what we're coming from. Most of us are in webheads. So we used to do them on Sundays, but we didn't want to do it this Sunday because it was Easter Sunday. She had other plans. So, uh, hi, Holly. <laughs> Anyhow, no, no, Holly, to you to talk to us. <laughs> I, would like to, I would like to tell uh, Nelly something. Uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, she hasn't failed, you know, 20 years. I understand you because at my university, I was, uh, I think that the first one that started with uh, online teaching after webheads or during my first part in, in webheads, actually, that I was working on my doctoral dissertation. And it was difficult for me to, to get the teachers to, to, to want to learn and or to go online, even blended learning that you want to. So, uh, I, I don't know if you remember Arnold Did from you uh, you're not the Netherlands. Speaking, you're mute, please. Is it some noise that might be from your house, uh, Daphne. Is it? No, no, no. no, no. no. I'm, a, I'm alone here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Arnold, Arnold uh, Miram from the Netherlands, he told me, you don't have to look for the people. They will have to look for you. When they need it, they will look for you. Don't, don't, don't make it hard on yourself. Because I felt that I was failing, you know, because it was my university, my people that I have known for many years and that I had worked with. 
and um, actually it was like that because uh, many years passed and with all the problem in Venezuela with the you know the, the political situation there teachers are leaving or have been leaving the university to go to other countries and and now the the university doesn't have teachers and they are asking all the all the teachers that used to work there to help from abroad and these teachers want to learn how to teach online and i've been asked a lot how to do this how to do the other and that they have been contacting me and same here in spain with teachers that i have uh, met since i've been here that nowadays with this uh, confinement and they have to be teaching their students they have uh, reached me for ideas and platforms to use and activities to do so it's a matter of um, having them know that there are people there for help to help them but uh, don't feel bad Nelly <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, now I would just add that I saw all of the teachers that I was working with just flip with this COVID. And uh, I mean, my colleague said, yeah, well, I did that Moodle course three years ago, but I, you know, there was no, she had no need for it at that point. And she's just put the whole lot on Moodle now because it's necessary. Mm -hmm. you know, it was yeah. extremely frustrating. <laughs> all these years of saying do it do it do it when the yeah, learner yeah. is ready the teacher appears and, and everyone i wonder if this is crazy i mean talking about the the face group group and thinking of the face group the facebook group as something that's larger than the web head so we kind of help it to grow so it's reaching out to all teachers everywhere maybe we could advertise a kind of almost a 24 7 zoom service that is we, we have a roster where each of us takes an hour every now and then to be there if anyone wants to drop in and say how do you do this stuff and whether it's not i mean is that a crazy idea that the web heads could actually sponsor not a 24 7 although there was enough takers maybe we could but a regular period of every day where people can drop in and ask questions about how to do stuff. It's a nice idea. And you know, Steve Hargadon is doing that. Uh, I, okay. that in that link I gave you with the shared document, there's something there about his 24 seven zoom service. Now, I don't know if he's still doing that, but we could look it up, but, uh, that would be hard to organize, I suppose. But, uh, I, Michael, I, I like the idea. You can see what you can do. And I'm sure it would be welcome. We'd all try to help how we could. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll explore that link. I think that's coming up. Yes, this is my cat back to say hello. One of our ah. cats. Ah. That's, that's a clue for what's changed about the Talon site. Yeah. You really want us to go there now, Vance? No, 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 no. It, it'll be there. I can see after. Web is an online think, convergence. Three of them. I think 2007, that, um, 2009. I think Michael has a great idea, that, but I, and, and I'm happy to do it, you know, my piece of the 24, but what I'm getting here, I'm, you know, I'm in the U.S., and what I'm getting here is, oh, it's, we can't, I give them a suggestion. I was on the phone yesterday with someone from Utah. I never heard of, I said, how do you hear about me? She says, oh, people say to call you. <laughs> I don't know what that is. But anyway, um, I've never been to Utah. <laughs> anyway, I give her suggestions and she would say, oh, we're not allowed to do that. They won't let us do this. They won't let us do that. And apparently there are a lot of rules. I'm not in K-12, but for children, a lot of rules. I think someone put in the chat earlier that um, they're not letting, in some places, not allowing webcam communication. And for English learners, that's that's the worst. I mean, the English learners, which is what we're all interested in, the language piece, the nonverbal is so important, the webcam is so important. So what do I tell the poor ESL teacher? You know, just adding that as a caveat. 
doesn't mean you don't pass on the advice. I mean, if they can't act on the advice, that's in a sense, not your problem. But I feel the same kind of pain that Nelly was talking about. And Nelly, I, look, I have a, exactly the same feeling of, I, it was almost 20 years in the game of trying to get other people, other teachers in the areas where I live, where I worked, to get online. And we got, I don't know, a third of the population, a third of the teaching population online, the 70% no. And I, I, I rate that as a failure. So despite what you say, Daff, I think that was very wise to see it that way. I did actually come out of it thinking ultimately I failed. Not I, but we right. as a profession failed to make it clear enough to people that it was really necessary. And of course, it's ironic to be here now and think had this happened 10 years ago, well, people would have been banging our doors down to, to get the skills. But anyway, that's not what happened. Well, the other yep. thing I find is that most of the questions are tiny little pieces, like quick question on Zoom. How do I do this? And I answer them. but they're not looking at the pedagogy piece and they're not they think that um it's all about just take your classes whatever you do and figure out how to do each little piece with a tool of some kind so i try and explain it you know you can't you know online is different in a substantive bit very different from the inside and that's my other webinar i'm doing on friday is uh, it's not about tools at all i don't mention it i talk about what it's like teaching and learning online. How does it feel? Why is it different? And how can you, how can you be who you are online? And people aren't interested. I, I did it last week and there were only seven people there. So I'm gonna try and do it again. <laughs> it took us years to learn all that, years. But you know what I do? What I do is, uh, Vance mentioned at the beginning, I've created online courses, free online courses on a Moodle site. And um, they're learning, they're, they're feeling it. They're getting that feeling. Because if you do just a virtual class, um, no matter what you do, you need them to be involved. You need them to be doing the class. Instead of you doing it, they have to be doing it. And what they're doing now is they're teaming up. I've organized so they team up. They're teaming up and they're giving their own classes. So it's not me talking about it. I mean, talking about it hasn't worked for me for the past, uh, well, it's actually 27 years. It hasn't worked for me. So what has worked for me is this teaming up on the Moodle, getting them to try out the tools. And, you know, it's actually throwing in them in the water and having them teach each other how to swim. And that's what they're doing. And I'm so amazed by it because it, it seems to work. You know, it's a lot of work on my part, you know, so getting it failure? there. No failure. I don't hear the word failure like I did before. Well, I hear the word success. Well, the failure, no, the failure is with my teacher, the teachers, my, you know, my colleagues in the schools where I work. That's where the failure is. Oh, I, I mean, I've succeeded with the world, with, you know, students from India, teachers from India, teachers from, from South America, teachers from Europe, a lot of European teachers, but not <clears throat> teachers, you know, for my school they but they, you're never a prophet in your own land that's a saying right exactly and that's where the failure as far as i'm concerned that's that's why i feel that there's failure i found uh i, I put something from lucy gray in uh, uh something she i just found it in these sites that i've i've set up uh for, she's great the global education conference you mean yes. Yes. Yeah, here, here's beautiful. something else that she set up here. This one is a bit.ly uh, thing there, the Daily Connect. So okay. uh, I'm not sure how that's going. I read, I heard about that a couple of weeks ago, but I think that's there's something there with the schedule, and I think that's part of where they're trying to stand ready to. Uh, they do have a Zoom chat room open. Maybe if you go to their Ning sites, uh, like Learning Revolution and things like that. You might, uh, we might be able to find more, but uh, the Daily Connect could be a way to, uh, to connect. Yeah, with I people. signed up for that. You know, mm -hmm. I signed up for it. I got accepted and everything, and mm -hmm. I don't feel like doing it. Mm. <laughs> well, you're doing so much already. You know, you're teaching with love. No, there's something about, something about 
I don't know. There's something about, um, I don't know. It's, it's just my thing, but there's something about the business aspect behind some of these, you know, making the most out of this opportunity. Let's make them, you know, let's make money out of this. Well, uh, that kind of turns me off. Sorry. I'll tell you a little story. And this is that, that with the, the last, the conference they're putting on right now, there's a conference going on now until the end of May, I think it's, uh, if you go to learningtogether.pbworks.com, root around in there, you can find it. But uh, Steve Hargan is putting it on, and I, I think Lane was a part of it. Lane was one of the presenters. I that's gave what, one last week. I'm giving one this week. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. So that's the what's the what is that conference? Learn, learning, you mean Learning Revolution? Learning Revolution. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. April. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. Now, yeah, that's April, the one. Okay. I didn't get a sense of commercialism um, there at all. I mean, you just, you submit a proposal, they accept it, you give mm -hmm. your session. They do have a place to say if you need compensation or if you are sponsoring to click some other link. So there must be a commercial piece to it, but I don't get involved in any of that. When mine. they first announced it, they said, Steve, Steve Hargan wrote that, uh, he that that if you wanted the recordings the, the, it was free to attend and the recordings would be 99 dollars if you wanted access oh, i didn't know that now i wrote him and i said steve what are you doing you know i mean this is i didn't uh, know the recordings cost anything i don't think they do actually that's later in the story but basically wrote me back he's kind of be irritated in a way saying he'd gotten a lot of feedback about that so i'm not sure if but but right now if you go to the site you want to hear lane's recording it's there you can play it you can you can link on it it's there for free so i don't really know uh if that's happening or not but anyway uh but that there is that kind of thing but the way steve explained it he said you know he's doing he, he's really involved uh maybe to a much higher level than we are I mean, the kind of thing that he must be awake all night, you know, and he and Lucy are, they do have a commercial aspect to what they do, but they do a lot of free things as well. And I hope this is one of them, you know, so uh, I was a little hesitant to present at this because I like to have access to my recordings, but anyway, they're there. So, and they're on YouTube. So I guess you could, I, I really don't know. I don't know what's going on with it, but uh, um it's just a feeling. I mean, I think what they're doing is great and, and they are paying for, for the 300. They have, Steve was telling me, they have a 300 uh, attendee Zoom. They have these rooms and they cost money. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, you have to, um, you can't just give away money. You do have to be able to uh, pay for the bills. I mean, pay your bills. The, if you're Zoom, the, names, paying for the names aren't free. No, I'm, no I'm, I'm talking about Zoom. The Zoom, yeah, Zoom the name is not free either. Yeah. Uh, for 300, it's not free. It costs quite a bit for 300. Got several of them. Who has? Uh, Steve, the Learning Revolution. Yeah, exactly. All the different yeah. uh, sites that, uh, that come from Anyways, that. that that's his income. You know, that he doesn't work like, you know, like I do. I mean, I, I work at a regular, I have a regular job. But he doesn't, so you know you got to make a living. So that's fine. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that. It's just the question is whether I want to be involved with it or not. Mm -hmm. That's my thing. Yeah, it's a, it's a balance, isn't it? I feel guilty. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, we're going to be back here next Sunday. So if you want to join us next Sunday, Lane is on tomorrow. She's uh, going to come and talk to us and hope talk with us and anyway it's a flipped learning thing so you should try to watch your video all that information is there at the uh on learning together and also if you go to talon uh, learning together.com no sorry tinyurl.com slash talon 2020 you'll find links to all uh, the presentations that are coming up um we and, and carla arena is offered to talk to us on the 17th, but she didn't put a time, so I've been in touch with her about that. But anyway, we'll let you know. But anyway, all the information is there, and uh, the links to the recordings are there. So they're all archived at learningtogether.net. Speaking of Learning Together, this is Learning Together episode 448, and this is the 13th of April. I bet you thought I was gonna forget about that. 2020, and we're Talon, Teaching and Learning in Isolation, web as an action learning together we're just all over the place and and nelly's teaching with love this uh this month 
What does it stand for? Live online virtual engagement. Well, there you go. I, I like it. That's a good, a good acronym. L O V E. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where's Michael? Did, did he pop out? It's getting late in Australia. He's it's my co-host. getting late where you are too. Uh, well, it's not that late. It's dinner time. Let's put it that way. I'm getting looks from the kitchen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, At she's least. sort of making the smells, you know, more obvious. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can smell it. Yes, I thought you might. Okay, Sandeep, <laughs> nice to see you for coming, and uh, thanks for uh, you doing a very good job uh, muting. I know you, he popped out for a minute, he came back in, and then his microphone came on, and that's what caused a little problem. He's, be, he's being very well behaved, everyone is, and we really appreciate everyone coming here, and nice to see you. Uh, pop by Talon 2020 tinyurl.com slash talent 2020 and you'll see what what's going on and if you want to present to us if you want to schedule yourself or you know uh, anywhere between 2 a.m utc and 2 p.m utc i'm available and i'm not doing much of anything else this month so uh, nice to see everybody bye-bye signing off bye-bye on behalf of michael coglin co-founder of webheads in action <laughs> Bye-bye. Nice to see everybody. Let's see. I always go for the top of the screen to turn off the recording, and it's down at the bottom of the screen. So uh, here we go. Okay. I'm stopping the recording. Bye, Chris. Bye, Susanna. Bye, Daph. Nice to see you again. <laughs>